anything for Selena's. Am I the only person that was waiting for that moment? Or at least a moment like that? Because it never happened. Dan it, Dan it. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. I like that. It's going to be my new song. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Batman. I have to say, going into watching this series, I had very low expectations based on my many years of cinematic expertise. I have learned that the first red flags for bad productions are always lighting and bad wigs. Now luckily, they weren't using $100 light kits, but when I tell you those heads were hit, I think the hair department just picked up what was on the side of the road, rinsed it off, flung it off really fast to dry, and slapped it on the actor's head right before action. Now why is this a big deal you ask? That is an excellent question. One, it tells the viewer how much effort went into pre-production, and B, it tells the viewer how serious we should take your word. Think about it, when you're talking to someone and they're looking a mess, you're not taking in whatever they're saying. The whole time you're saying to yourself, Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? Yeah, that was me for over 10 hours watching this. It did get better at the end, but it was like, up oh, too late. <laughs> Before I give my thoughts, let me set the scene. In part one of the series, the main focus is Abraham and his drive for putting the band together. Selena is on board. Suzette is like, if you want Sheila E, call her, cause I ain't the one. AB is like, okay, I'll do it if you stop talking. In the very first episode, I find the first problem. It was reoccurring, and that's that the storyline focuses on everyone but Selena. I mean, I really wonder why it just wasn't called the Quintanillas. But moving along, we see AB's downward spiral of chasing the hit. Abraham and AB finesse their way into a record deal, and we're entering Selena's teenage years. Two more problems arise, and we're only in the second episode. Being that this is a series and not a movie, you're not as cramped for time for story development. So it was a huge missed opportunity to not have another actor play Selena as a teenager because Christian as a 15 year old, um, yeah, just wasn't doing it for me. We all know Selena was very playful, but Christian's performance gave an adult pretending to be a kid, but not in a good way. So I really was like. The other problem, again, reoccurring, Christian's performance very much reminded me of J-Lo, but as if she was mimicking J-Lo who acted like Selena. There's a moment when she says, when I think about you on bass, Suzette on drums, nothing else matters. And I know Selena had a raspy voice, but it was very much giving Boogie Down Bronx. I thought Jennifer stepped on the set. What's going on here? Christian herself has admitted to growing up watching the movie till she was blue in the face, knowing it backwards and forwards. So I wouldn't be surprised if those years of unconscious studying bled into her performance. I mean, if you were to tell me that all she did to prepare for this series was watch the movie, I wouldn't fight you on it. But moving along, in the next few episodes, we see Selena develop more as an artist. She wins her first award, she learns Spanish, Suzette has a moment with her fan. We finally meet our beloved Big Bertha when the band goes on tour. We see changes in her hair, AB meets his wife, Abraham buys three houses. So we're in the fifth episode and I realize another problem. You see how fast I went through those moments? The series very much feels like snapshots of moments. They give us 30 minute episodes like it's a sitcom that takes away from the experience. <sighs> But moving along, Selena wins and performs at the TMAs. They sign with EMI, AB has a baby. Selena y Los Dinos drops to Los Dinos. Selena leans more into her passions. AB finally writes Como La Flor after five years of it being stuck in his head, but it was worth the wait. AB recruits Chris Perez with his wig and toe. And here lies the creme de la creme of the problems of part one, Mr. Chris Perez. First of all, when they meet, it's supposed to be like, guys, it's here, the moment we've all been waiting for, love at first sight. <sighs> so I'm supposed to take Mr. Raccoon and Miss Possum and say, oh, no, I, this is so cheesy. I mean, I feel nothing. We get nothing 
By this point in the actual film, Selena and Chris's love story starts to form. Here, we get nothing. Well, I'm lying. They give us a couple of looks. They sing a song together over and over, but there's no connection. They go to the beach and have a bland conversation. I mean, no salt, no pepper, no paprika, just bland. They almost get caught kissing and decide to be friends, and I'm like, I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. Then they have the stage play reenactment of Chris getting thrown off the bus. I mean, if the struggle bus was real, this would be it. Child, throw it away. So, part two of the series was advertised as the Selena we all know. I wish I could say they saw the complaints from part one and took note, but part one and two were filmed together. I think the part that the writers, producers, directors, and even actors missed was the whole point of us watching the show was because we wanted to learn more, see more of what we haven't. It's not that we weren't open to a new experience. So advertising the Selena we all know was kind of redundant. The point is, they simply missed the mark. But moving along, part two actually was better than part one. And what I'm about to say is no shade. This is something that literally just came to me as I'm recording this. Every actor's performance with the exception of Christians in both parts was the same. It didn't get any better, it didn't get any worse. It was just the same. Christians got better. You remember that time, I don't know, like two minutes ago when I said Christian admitted to knowing the movie back and forth, watching it till she was blue in the face? The reason I think she had a stronger performance is because it was heavily based on a um, different source material, if you know what I mean. But moving along, I'm not going to give a blow by blow of part two because we all know the story. I just want to highlight a couple of moments. I'll start with the positives. The actress who played Yolanda Saldivar, she did a phenomenal job. Although as soon as I saw her, I was ready to come through the screen and really let her have it because we know what's about to come. We know this is where the story turns. My heart literally started beating so fast as soon as they mentioned her name and every time I saw her after that. I'm not going to speak on the real Yolanda but performance wise Natasha Perez had it the way she talked her mannerisms everything and kudos to her for even taking the role of one of the most hated people in the world because there's no amount of money you could ever give me do you understand Whew. let me calm down I need to talk about something lighter oh child this moment here <laughs> So a lady and her two daughters are headed to get ice cream. The oldest daughter stands there stunned to see Selena and the lady like, who is that? And she's like a famous singer, mom. Beyonce knows you better learn not to be afraid of people if you ever want to be famous too. <laughs> And then somewhere in there, she told her mom to be quiet. And if you know anything about Miss Tina, you know it did not happen like that. But it was a cute moment. Now, for my biggest problem with part two, Chris and Selena's relationship. To add insult to injury of not feeling the love in part one, they had the nerve to have them arguing every five seconds in part two. Like you really just don't want me to want them to be together. I'm convinced. One of the things we admire about Selena is her love story with Chris. So to show it in that light and to read that Chris Perez said the complete opposite in his book was like, eh, nah, I'm not feeling it. But to be honest, all in all, this is not the worst thing I've ever seen. Definitely could have been better, but I couldn't quite put my finger on why I still just wasn't connecting. That's until I rewatched the movie. As soon as I pushed play, I instantly got emotional. I was instantly invested. Them rushing to get on stage, Susie yelling at Selena, telling her her outfit was gonna look good. Selena giving Chris a kiss before stage, looking back at her parents before she stepped out into the arena, performing the oldies at the Astrodome, a be behind her Abraham admiring her saying how beautiful she looks Marcella telling her you go girl the heart of it I can't say it's nostalgia because I've seen this movie a million times it's not a throwback for me as soon as you push play there is something that comes over you a feeling that didn't happen with the series when Selena and Abraham to have that sweet moment when he discovered she can sing I realized we didn't really see Abraham being tender in the series I feel like his anger lingered much longer and that father-daughter 
their relationship just didn't come across the same. Now, I try not to be too hard on kid actors because people think it's mean when you're honest. Um, <laughs> so all I'm gonna say is the film kids were naturals especially young Selena, and I'll leave that there. The washing machine followed by the bustier scene. Iconic lines left and right in the movie. We got zero iconic lines in the series. Also, Jennifer is wearing a short wig right here that looked decent in the 90s. So in 2020, I don't understand why this is what we got. I I just, I, I can't. A.B. driving Big Bertha, another classic moment with anything for Salinas. I don't know about anybody else, but I was waiting for a moment like this. Never happened. When Chris auditions at the house for A.B. and Abraham made me think about how Chris pops up in the series and then we don't see him again. He shows up with the raccoon on his head later and we're supposed to be like, their love at first sight moment. In the movie, there's that instant liking from him by Selena when she sees his audition. And then their love at first sight comes after Susie gives him a makeover, which was another fun, notable moment. When we see Selena and Chris fall in love, it's gradual but efficient and that made me realize chemistry between actors are just as important as the words on the page if not more in the film we got to see the edge and chris that abraham felt was too much or not right for his daughter the series he was a square like why would abraham not like him this is right up your alley i just it didn't work for him to be like ah chris stay away from my daughter and this is what we were talking about like it just it didn't match. And then later on in the movie when Selena and Chris are seen hugging on a bus by Abraham and he blows up, you actually feel bad because the love was felt, the connection was felt, you're rooting for them. The stakes felt high when they got married without telling anyone because of the friction. The series gave none of that. When Selena sings Como La Flor to quiet the crowd, the bitty bitty bum bum montage, actually all of the performances. Jennifer had that fire. I was waiting for it in the series and it never came. One of the reasons the movie was so good is because the actors spent a lot of time with the family. The only person the series actors had contact with was Suzette and it was weeks after they had already started filming. Edward hung out with Abraham and his friends all the time. John lived in the same house that Chris Perez shared with Selena for four months. Jennifer stayed with the family as well and Suzette even said she had moments when she would get scared just looking at Jennifer, even down to the way she would sit down and wrap herself in a blanket. The essence, the spirit, the magic. Sometimes you just got it. And that is what the series was missing. What did you think of the series? Do you agree with my critiques? Let me know down below. If you haven't already, hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell if you don't youtube will never show you my videos as always i'm all ears until next time bye